Who wrote? Who wrote the Bible? Was the gospel really sent down by God? Was the gospel really sent down by God? Is Jesus really a God? Is he the Son of God? Many questions bounced up into my mind urging me to read, search, and investigate. So I opened the gospel and tried to search for answers in the most popular, widely used and spread street Matthew, Matthew, gospel. Who is Jesus' father? The first issue that truly drew my attention was the story of Jesus' birth in the gospel. The following was written therein. And Jacob begot Joseph the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Matthew 1 verse 16. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is, God with us. Then Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Jesus. First of all, it was mentioned that he was the son of Joseph, but afterwards, it was written that that he was of the Holy Ghost, doesn't this contradiction worth thinking and meditation? In the Quran, Allah sent down an independent chapter in which he, may he be glorified and exalted, describes himself, he said. Say, He is Allah, who is, one, Allah, the eternal refuge, He neither begets nor is born, nor is there to Him any equivalent. Quran.com 112 Say, O Messenger, He is Allah who is alone in being a deity. There is no deity except Him. Say, He is Allah, who is, one. Alone, without another, indivisible with absolute and permanent unity and distinct from all else. The one and only true deity, unique in His essence, attributes and deeds. He is the master to whom belongs all sovereignty and perfect, beautiful qualities. The one to whom all creation turn to. Allah, the eternal refuge. He who is absolute, perfect, complete, essential, self-sufficient and sufficient to meet the needs of all creation. The one eternally and constantly required and sought, depended upon by all existence and to whom all matters will ultimately return. The one who did not give birth to anyone, nor did anyone give birth to him. So he has no offspring, may he be glorified, nor any parent. He neither begets nor is born. Nor does he have any equal from his creation. Nor is there to him any equivalent. Quran, Eklas, 112-1-4 A God or Son of God If the Gospel vowed that Jesus was the Son of God, what does the following paragraph mean? Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. If the Son of God was to be worshipped, how come he was tortured, spit upon, and crucified according to what was written? The Son of God subject to hunger and temptation. Do you imagine that the Son of God would be subject to hunger and temptation by the devil? Why would God let this happen to his beloved and pious Son? Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward in hungred. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written.
he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and sheweth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and, behold, angels came and ministered unto him. How would a disobedient devil overpower God's Son, take him up to a high mountain, show him the kingdom of the worlds and offer them to him in return for worshipping him? On the other hand, in Islam, the only power Satan would have over a person is to evilly insinuate for him to disobey their God. How come the identity of Jesus was not known to people? And why did he call himself, the Son of Man, yet he was the Son of God? Allah, may he be glorified and exalted, said in the Quran. O population of the book, or, family of the book, i.e., Jews and Christians, do not go beyond the bounds in your religion and do not say concerning Allah, anything, except the truth. Surely the Masi, Isa son of Maryam, the Messiah, Jesus son of Mary, was only the messenger of Allah, and his word that he cast forth to Maryam, and a spirit from him. So, believe in Allah and his messengers, and do not say, 3. Refrain, most charitable is it for you, surely Allah is only one God. All extalment be to him that he should have a child. To him, belongs, whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth, and Allah suffices for an ever-trusted trustee. Quran.com 4171 Say, O Messenger, to the Christians who received the Gospel, do not overstep the limits in your religion and do not say anything but the truth about Allah in relation to Jesus. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, is only Allah's Messenger sent with the truth. He created him by his word which he sent with Gabriel to Mary, which was the word be and he became. It was a breath from Allah which Gabriel blew with Allah's instruction. So have faith in Allah and all his messengers without making a distinction between them. Do not say, the gods are three. Avoid saying this false statement and it will be better for you in this world and the afterlife. Allah is the only one God free of any partner or child. He is self-sufficient. The dominion of the heavens, the earth and whatever is in between the two is his. He is sufficient as a guardian to carry out the affairs of his creation. And Nisa 171. He also said. And the Jews have said, Ezra is the son of Allah. And the Nazara, i.e. the Christians, have said, Al-Masi, the Messiah, is the son of Allah. That is their saying with their mouths. Conforming with the saying of the disbelievers earlier. Allah fights them. However are they diverged, into the falsehood? Quran.com 930 The Jews and the Christians associate partners with Allah, the Jews do so by claiming that, Uzair is the son of Allah. And the Christians do so by claiming that the Messiah, Jesus, is the son of Allah. What they say with their own mouths is simply made up without any proof from Allah. By saying such things, they are similar to the idolaters before them, who said that the angels were the daughters of Allah. Allah is far above such things, may Allah destroy them. How can they turn away from the clear truth to falsehood? At Taba, 30. Why would anyone bear the sin of others? Was that just especially for the Son of God? That conception really sank in, is it just unfair to bear the aftermath of others' sins? Any vain person would refuse to bear the sin of another, even if it is his own flesh and blood, if this was the case, oppression and tyranny would domain among humans. Having this decreed upon his own son, would subject God to being charged with injustice, tyranny, and cruelness for decreeing such destiny over an innocent person. Especially if it happens to be his own son. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Allah said in the Quran. Surely Allah does not do injustice so much as an atom's weight, and in case it is a fair deed, he will double it and bring from very close to him a magnificent reward. Quran.com 440 Allah is just and does not wrong his creatures in any way. He does not lessen the good they do by the weight of even a tiny particle or dust, and he does not add to their disobedience in any way. Even if only an atom's worth of good is done, he multiplies the reward, from his grace, and through this increase he gives a great reward. And Nisa, 40. And whoever comes with a fair deed, literally, the fair deed, then he will have ten times the like of it, and whoever comes with an odious deed, literally, 
the odious deed, then he will not be recompensed except the like of it, and they will not be done in injustice, Quran.com 6160. Whoever of the believers brings a good action on the day of judgment, Allah will multiply it for them ten times. Whoever brings an evil action will only be punished with its equivalent amount, and not more than that. On the day of judgment, they will not be wronged by a reduction in the reward of good actions, nor by an increase in the punishment for evil actions. Al-Anam 160 To sum up, one should really think, why would God let all that sufferings befall his beloved son? Being called to a person who is not his real father, being tried and overpowered by Satan, being denied and rejected by his people, and not common people. But the highest rank of priests and wise men, being betrayed and denied by all his disciples, being unjustly and falsely accused, humiliated, and finally crucified. I think my friend that, after these contradictions, you have to ask yourself if you still believe that the, in hand, gospel is the one which was sent down by God. What is a whole? WHO wrote the Bible? What is a holy book? No one has ever said it would be an easy mission to find the right path, but those who search will definitely be guided and they will reach the truth. I'm going to share my own experience that might help you find the righteous way. I've always thought Bible was a holy book, I mean, holy, which came directly from God to people or prophets, a book that was written or delivered word for word by prophets through inspiration. But to my surprise, I found that the Bible was written by 40 writers, you can call them prophets, scholars, or just writers, as we did not know all of them yet, unfortunately. Let's search, who wrote the Bible? The Bible was written over a span of 1,500 years, by 40 writers. Unlike other religious writings, the Bible reads as a factual news account of real events, places, people, and dialogue. Historians and archaeologists have repeatedly confirmed its authenticity. Using the writer's own writing styles and personalities, God shows us who he is and what it's like to know him. History of the Bible, who wrote the Bible? That was not enough for me so I started searching again where did the Bible come from? And then I found this amazing video, please watch it first before continuing reading. Where did the Bible come from? Shocking Facts In this video the speaker mentions that writings themselves did not descend from the heavens neither did the table of content. And after all the books are written and edited there was still a matter of compiling certain books and excluding others. As if that was not enough to let scholars argue a bit. Translation of Bible have turned out to deliver a lot of falsified info, unless you have a copy of 1600-year-old Codex Sinaiticus and can read the Bible in Greek. At the end of the video the speaker says that instead of having a book already complete or dictated word for word to a prophet. God has inspired us to write the book by our human words, and while the inspiration itself was from God. The work itself was entrusted to us. The truth will set you free. What was mentioned at the end of the video was truly perfect for me. I mean I have always felt like, this is no way God's words, and after reading and searching. I felt really comforted with the results, as I started feeling that I'm approaching. Moreover, there is over 450 English versions of the Bible all are translated using different methods and from entirely different manuscript. Thousands of manuscripts disagreeing with each other wildly in what verses and even books they contain. Different translations teach entirely different things in places. Some often leaving out entire chapters and verses or containing footnotes warning of possible error due to uncertainty about the reliability of the numerous manuscripts. And to add more Christians had a denied access to their Bible for 1000 year, however we are not arguing those claims now. Another search. I started searching for Islam and Quran this time. And I was amused that they still have the Arabic version, the original version of Quran. Unlike the Bible that we don't have the original version of it, at least I do not. If you found a one please do not hesitate showing it. And having the original copy of anything makes life way easier. As you always have a reference to all the translations if you doubted anything. The uniqueness of the Quran. The Quran is unique because it is the only revealed book that exists today in the precise form and content in which it was originally revealed. Furthermore, it was actively recorded during the time the religion was being established. The origin or the Quran. The Prophet Muhammad disseminated the Quran in a piecemeal and gradual manner from AD 610 to 632, the year in which he passed away. The evidence indicates that he recited the text and scribes wrote down what they heard. The origin or the Quran. So the Quran was written over a span of 22 to 23 years. During the life of the Prophet Muhammad, where no one else received the revelation except him, with the exact same language being used today. 
That means when you are reading Quran it is like you are listening to what exactly Allah says to the whole world. That does not mean that Quran is not translated to other languages. It is of course. However, if there is any misconception you can always search for an Arabic tongue person to solve it with you. Check it yourself. So, you have an original copy of Quran, with no contradicting verses. One prophet who carried it along 23 years, the wisely used language, the evidences of all the previous nations. The sequence and main message of the oneness of Allah were more than enough for me to reach the truth and to know that there is no God but Allah. Muhammad, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, is Allah's prophet, and Jesus is Allah's prophet, peace be upon him. Do not waste your time. You have a book that is directly from God. Give it a try and read it wisely. I will leave you now with two audios the first one is for Bible recitation in Hebrew, with vocals singing in the background, and the other one is for Quran. Just hear both of them with your heart and you will find the difference. Bible in Hebrew. Quran in Arabic. <laughs> 